Good morning. We have much great news to share with the American people today as we continue to deliver on our promises. Due to a record-long delay in confirmation and the confirmation process by the Senate Democrats, which I call the obstructionists. Maybe they'll change, but I doubt it for a while. But they are truly obstructionists. This is our first Cabinet meeting with the entire Cabinet present. Uh, the confirmation process has been record-setting long, and I mean record-setting long, with some of the finest people in our country being delayed and delayed and delayed. But that's — much of that is over. And now we go, we're going through, as you know, the regular process with people at other levels of government. And that's a very long process also, including Ethics Committee, which has become uh, very difficult to deal with. Uh, all of that being said, we now have our Cabinet finally approved. And I want to welcome Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue. Thanks, Sonny. Secretary of Labor, Alex Acosta. Director of National Intelligence, Daniel Coates. Thank you, Dan. And U.S. Trade Representative, Robert Lighthizer. There's an incredible, talented group of people in this room. Generals, governors, congressmen, entrepreneurs, business leaders, and many, many others. I choose each person at this table, and I chose them not only because of their remarkable experience and success, but because they've all united by one shared goal to what they want to do is one very simple but very beautiful goal, serving and defending our beloved nation. Together, we're working every day, and we've been working very hard together for our country to protect their safety, bringing back jobs into our country, and putting always America first. And when I ran, it was Make America Great Again, and that's what we're doing. Believe me, we're doing it, and we're doing it at a much faster pace than anyone thought. I will say that never has there been a president, with few exceptions — in the case of FDR, he had a major depression to handle — who's passed more legislation, who's done more things than what we've done. Between the executive orders and the job-killing regulations that have been terminated, uh, Many bills, I guess over 34 bills in Congress signed, a Supreme Court justice who's going to be a great one, going to be a great Supreme Court justice, and many other things. We've achieved tremendous success. And I think we've been about as active as you can possibly be and at a just about record-setting pace. And we're achieving these goals by eliminating these job-killing regulations, unlocking American energy, rebuilding our military, pursuing fair and reciprocal trade deals, achieving massive reductions in illegal immigration, transforming the Department of Veterans Affairs, and building a new partnership among nations to defeat terrorism, which we have to do. In just a very short time, we're seeing amazing results. And, in fact, there are a couple of major stories today in the newspapers about mines that are opening and the miners are going back to work. Actually, they're pretty big stories. People are surprised. It's kicking in very fast. More small businesses are planning to hire than at any point in over a decade. And last month, unemployment fell to its lowest point in 16 years. I recently returned from a trip overseas that included deals for more than $350 billion worth of military and economic investment in the United States. These deals will bring many thousands of jobs to our country and, in fact, will bring millions of jobs, ultimately, and help Saudi Arabia take a greater role in providing stability and security in that region. Uh, one of the big things that we did, and you're seeing it now with Qatar and all of the things that are actually going on in a very positive fashion, uh, we are stopping the funding of terrorism. They are going to stop the funding of terrorism. And it's not an easy fight, but that's a fight we're going to win. There will be — you have to starve the beast, and we're going to starve the beast, believe me. Secretary Price has been working very hard to repeal and replace Obamacare. The ha House passed a bill. The Senate has it right now. Uh, Mitch McConnell is working very, very hard, as are the Republican senators. We will have zero backing 
from the Democrats, even though uh, they should get in and do something, but we expect to get zero. If we had the greatest bill in the history of the world on health care, we wouldn't get one vote from the Democrats because they're obstructionists. That's what they want to do. That's the game. They think that's their best political game. They're looking to 18. Uh, so far, we've had two races, and we've won both of those races. They spent millions and millions of dollars, congressional races. Uh, we have another one coming up, and uh, we've been doing very well. But they're obstructionists, and that's sad. But we are coming up with something that I believe will be uh, very good, with zero support from the obstructionist Democrats. Sad. Secretary Mnuchin is helping us put together one of the biggest tax cuts in American history. It may be the biggest single tax cut in American history. And that also includes a great deal of tax reform, simplification, and other things. Director Mulvaney has led our efforts to introduce a new budget that cuts wasteful Washington spending and protects the taxpayer. And that will come out. And believe me, we'll take care of the people that have to be taken care of. So that's a first step. But we will be taking care of the people that have to be taken care of on a human basis that's very, very important. Today, we're going to hear from Secretary Tillerson and Secretary Mattis on the ways that we're combating ISIS and defeating terrorism. We've had tremendous success against ISIS in our fight in the Middle East. We're, we're doing very, very well. Uh, we're going to be having a news conference in two weeks on that fight. And you'll see numbers that you would not have believed. And frankly, if you look back to even six months ago, you wouldn't have believed it was possible. Uh, Secretary Shulkin will give us an update on his tremendous work to make sure that our veterans are finally given the care that they deserve, one of the most important things to me on the campaign trail. We've also been strongly pushing for the passage of the VA Accountability Act to ensure employees of the VA can be held accountable if they fail our great veterans. It's passed the Senate, and the House is voting tomorrow. So tomorrow, we have a big vote coming up, David, and I think we're going to be in good shape. Uh, but that's something that is uh, going to be great for our veterans. We're also going to hear from Secretary Acosta about a major announcement that I'll be making later this week, expanding apprenticeships and getting our people back to work. Well, we have the lowest number in terms of unemployment in many, many years. Uh, at the same time, I've always argued with that number because it doesn't take into account millions and millions of people that have given up looking for jobs. And we're going to be doing something about that, and we're going to get those people back to work. And it's already starting in Ohio, and it's starting in Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, and South Carolina, and Florida. You see the numbers, and they're starting. I call them the forgotten men and women, but they're not going to be forgotten much longer, believe me. There are millions of good jobs that lead to great careers, jobs that do not require a four-year degree or the massive debt that often comes with those four-year degrees and even two-year degrees. These jobs require advanced skills and technical training, and we're going to start that. The apprenticeships, a very good word from the Trump standpoint, the word apprentice. <laughs> apprenticeships. Uh, are going to be a big, big factor in our country. You have people with tremendous talent, maybe a mechanical talent, or maybe a talent for fixing an engine or a motor. Met a lot of people that graduated high in their class at the best colleges in the world have no clue, and they would never be good at it. It's a different kind of an ability, but it's a great ability nevertheless. We're going to help get our young people the technical training that they need to pursue really exciting careers and careers that they can make good money. They can really earn a great, great salary and maybe even open small businesses. If everyone in this room continues to do their jobs, then we can restore American prosperity and make millions and millions of dollars, and we can make for these people and the American dream come true. To make the American dream come true for a lot of people that will not have had that experience without the election results that we had on November 8th. So we're here to change Washington, return power to the people. We're here to give people a great shot at a great, great job and even opening 
small businesses, and employing other people. I look forward to hearing all of the reports from the different people in the room today. Uh, we have done, as I said, about as much as anybody ever in a short period of time in a presidency. Uh, that's despite uh, tremendous opposition from the other side. Uh, we have done something that's very special. And you see it in the economic numbers, because the economic numbers have been incredible. One just came out. Almost $4 trillion in uh, worth has been created in the stock markets of our country. You just take a look at that. Uh, 700,000 jobs have been created in a very short period of time since the election. 700,000 jobs. If we would have said that on November 8th, nobody would have believed the number. If we would have said uh, that almost $4 trillion in the stock markets has been created, everybody would have laughed at us. They would have said, oh, that's ridiculous. Uh, but that's what, that's what it is. So we're very proud of it. We have a phenomenal team of people, a great group of talent, and we are really now seeing the early fruits of their labor. Uh, some of them won't be able to kick in because statutorily you have to wait periods of time before you're allowed to do the filing. Uh, we'll be having some major legislation very soon on the dumping of steel in our country, which is absolutely killing our workers and our steel companies. We're going to be having some very major legislation on the dumping of aluminum and various other things into our country, which is killing our workers. And we'll be announcing that very soon. So uh, I think what we'll do, most of you know most of the people around the room, but I'm going to start with our, our Vice President. Where is our Vice President? Our Vice President. There he is. Uh, and I'll maybe start with Mike, and we'll just go around and just you name your position, and then we'll ask these folks to uh, go back and have a good day, and we're going to discuss our various reports. Mike? Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, just the greatest privilege of my life is to serve as, uh, as Vice President to a president who's keeping his word to the American people and assembling a team that's bringing real change, real prosperity, and real strength and back to our nation. Thank you, Mike. Um, Mr. President, it's great to be here and celebrate this group. Uh, we are receiving, as you know, I'm not sure the rest of you fully understand the support with law enforcement all over America. Good. They have been very frustrated. Uh, they are so thrilled that we have a new uh, idea that we're going to support them and work together to properly, lawfully uh, fight the rising crime that we're seeing. And, uh, it's an honor to be able to serve you in that regard. You Thank set you. the exact right message, and it's being responded. The response is fabulous around the country. Great success, including MS-13. They're being thrown out in record numbers and rapidly. And uh, they're being depleted. They'll all be gone pretty soon. So you're right, Jeff. Thank you very much. Alex? Mr. President, um, I'm uh, privileged to be here, uh, deeply honored. And I want to thank you for keeping your commitment to the American workers. Um, this week uh, is a full schedule for you uh, focusing on the American worker. We're very excited at the Department of Labor and uh, the apprenticeship program that, that they're going to be announcing, I think, is going to make a real difference. So thank you. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you. Mr. President, honored to be on the team. Uh, this last week, I had the great privilege to represent America uh, at China at the Green Energy Ministerial. Uh, good timing. Uh, they needed to hear why America was stepping away from the Paris Accord, and they did, and that America is not stepping back. Uh, but uh, uh, we're stepping into place uh, and sending some messages uh, that we're still going to be leaders in the world when it comes to the climate, uh, but we're not going to be held hostage to some executive order that uh, was ill thought out. So uh, my hat's off to you for taking that stand and for sending a clear message around the world uh, that America is going to continue to lead in the area of energy. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. It's a new day at the United Nations. You know, we now have a very strong voice. People know what the United States is for, they know what we're against, and they see us leading across the board. And so I think the international community knows we're back. Thank you, Ms. Good. Mr. President, thank you for the kind words about the budget. Uh, you're absolutely right. We are going to be able to take care of the people who really need it. At the same time, with your direction, we were able to also 
focus on the forgotten men and women who are the folks who are paying those taxes. So I appreciate your support and your direction in uh, pulling that budget together. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. President. It's good to be back in the United States. I actually arrived back this morning at 1 o'clock from Italy in the G7 summit uh, focused on the environment. And our message there was uh, the United States is going to be focused on growth and protecting the environment. It was received well. Good job. Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, the intelligence community has never faced such a diversity of threats to our country uh, in our lifetimes. Um, we have men and women who are working 24-7, seven days a week uh, to make sure that uh, we are on top of all these threats. Uh, it's a joy to be working with the people that uh, I have inherited, uh, and we are going to provide, continue to provide you with the very best intelligence we can so that you can formulate policies to deal with these issues. Thank you, Bill. Mr. President, it's a privilege to serve, to serve the students of this country, and to work to ensure that every child has an equal opportunity to get a great education and therefore a great future. Thank you. President, uh, what an incredible honor it is to, to uh, lead the Department of Health and Human Services at this pivotal time under your leadership. Uh, I can't thank you enough for the, the privilege that you've given me and the leadership that you've shown. Seems like there's an international flair to the, uh, the messages that are being delivered. I had the opportunity to represent the United States at the G20 Health Summit in Berlin and at the World Health Assembly in, in Geneva. And I can't tell you how excited and enthusiastic folks are about the United States' leadership as it relates to global health security. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, as your CEO uh, on your staff, <laughs> That's true. and uh, it's an honor to be your steward of our public lands and the generator of energy dominance. I am deeply honored. And I am committed and optimistic that we can be both great stewards and be the world's largest producer of energy. Good. And you can do both. Thank you very much. Thanks. Rex? Mr. President, thank you for the honor to serve the country. It's a great privilege you've given me. Uh, clearly, we are engaged with our allies to ensure that they know where our common interests lie, what our expectations mm -hmm. are, that America will continue to be a leader, but they must do more. And they must meet their obligations, both from a national security standpoint, but also for creating conditions of stability, prosperity, and for our adversaries. We are engaging and will engage, but they have to know that we will be engaging from a position of strength to protect America's national interest. And we expect to make progress on resolving some of these differences. Mr. President, it's an honor to represent the men and women of the Department of Defense, and we are grateful uh, for the sacrifices our people are making in order to strengthen our military so our diplomats always negotiate from a position of strength. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you for the opportunity to help fix the trade deficit and other things. The other countries are gradually getting used to the fact that the free rides are somewhat over with. You're not happy with it, but I think they're <coughs> having growing recognition of it. So I'm thrilled to have a chance to help you live up to your campaign promises. Good. Thank you, Wilbur. Mr. President, last week was a great week. It was Infrastructure Week. Thank you so much for coming over to the Department of Transportation. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of people were just so thrilled, uh, hanging out, watching the whole ceremony. I want to thank you for getting this country moving uh, again and also working again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. President, proud to be here. Certainly uh, very proud to represent the quarter of a million men and women that serve the country in DHS. Uh, in the five months that I've been in the job, we have gone a long way to facilitate the, uh, uh, improve the legal movement of people in commerce across our borders, uh, yet at the same time have uh, gone a long way to safeguarding our borders, particularly the southern border working with all of our partners to the south. 70% uh, drop in illegal immigration. While we still welcome legal immigrants to the tune of over a million a year, we are no longer a uh, friendly environment for illegal border crossers. Thank you. Mr. President, first of all, I apologize for being late for work. In about, <laughs> about four months, I got dropped down in that swamp that you've been trying to plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also have traveled. I just got back from Paris where we met with the OECD and the WTO both. And uh, the message was similar to Wilbur's. It was mat uh, deficits do matter and ours are coming down. <coughs> I, should be here. I know they are. Good morning, Mr. President. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to serve at SBA. And I can tell you that as I haven't been traveling internationally, but I've been traveling 
around the country. And what I'm continuing to hear is this renewed optimism from small businesses, higher than it's been in about 16 years. So those uh, people returning to the workforce, a lot of them are because small businesses are creating new jobs. So loan portfolios are up, mentoring and uh, our outreach with SCORE and our other programs are being so successful. So thank you, we're on, we're on a good trajectory and still a lot of work to do. Thank you. On behalf of the entire senior staff around you, Mr. President, we thank you for the opportunity and the blessing that you've given us to serve your agenda and the American people. And we're continuing to work very hard every day to accomplish those goals. Mr. President, it's honored to serve as your CIA director. Uh, it's an incredible privilege to lead the men and women who are providing intelligence so that we can do the national security mission. And in the finest tradition of the CIA, I'm not going to say a damn thing in front of the media. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you for your support and commitment to honoring our responsibility to, our, to America's veterans. I know that this is personally very important to you. I have the great honor of being able to represent the 21 million American veterans that have done such great things for this country, and I've worked every day to make sure that we're honoring that responsibility. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, it's been a great honor to, uh, to work with you. Thank you for your strong support of HUD and for all others around this table that I've worked with. Uh, we're making tremendous progress and, and converting to a business model. I've already seeing tremendous savings there. And uh, this month is uh, National Homeowners Month, and uh, therefore I'll be ringing the, uh, the bell on Wall Street at 4 o'clock, which means I have to leave at 12. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mr. President. Uh, uh, while we're bragging about international travel, I just got back from Mississippi. <laughs> they love you there. <laughs> and uh, I want to congratulate you on the men and women you placed around this table. The, the holistic team of working for America is, is making results in each and every area. Working with Secretary Ross and uh, uh, Ambassador Lighthouse and Secretary Mnuchin and, and, and uh, Tom Price and Scott Pruitt. This is the team you've assembled that's working hand in glove with, for, for the betterment of America. And I want to I thank you for that. These are, are great team members and uh, we're on your team. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. It was a great honor traveling with you around the country for the last year and an even greater honor to be here serving in your cabinet. On behalf of everybody at the Treasury, I can assure you we are focused on creating sustained economic growth, sweeping tax reform, and fighting terrorism with sanctions and all other programs within our control. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.